Welcome to Resource for Care's Aging in Memphis, where we interview healthcare and wellness professionals on educational topics. And today we have Miranda Griffin in the studio. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. And today Miranda is going to be talking about the essential tips for leading a healthy life. Basically understanding um, that health is everything and everything is a choice. And I'm quoting you on that. Yes. So tell me, Miranda, how did you get into doing this or being focused on this? That is such a loaded question. But in a nutshell, about 10 years ago, I was going through some major health issues myself. Mm -hmm. uh, to fast forward a little bit, because it was over a period of time. It didn't happen overnight. But I was diagnosed with lupus, mm. RA, and fibromyalgia. And then I also had Raynard syndrome. Oh my goodness. And, and of course, you know, your seasonal allergies, I've right. had migraines since high school. Mm. And so you, when I look back, I'm thinking how many issues I had that I just pushed aside thinking, oh, that's just part of aging. Right. Just, you know, it's just life. life. Yeah. You, mm -hmm. just, you learn to live with it. Mm -hmm. Going to the doctor all the time, mm -hmm. but the pain was becoming really intense mm -hmm. and then on top of it I was going through menopause oh wow so literally wow. I was a hot mess yes literally <laughs> some of us women know what she means by that so you know um, aging in Memphis the podcast is all about sharing educational information mm -hmm. there's a lot of um, podcasts out there just interviewing people so let's just jump right in and share with us um, along that journey, mm -hmm. you know, what things you learned and what things our audience could really benefit from. Absolutely. You know, I always say you don't know what you don't know. And back then I didn't know a lot. Mm -hmm. and I still don't know a lot. There's so much information out there. However, uh, just connecting with people that holistically, let me just kind of rephrase that a little bit because I wanted more of a holistic uh, perspective because I was going to the doctor every three months. Mm. And over a three year period, it took them that long to diagnose me with most of the things that I had. However, I started researching foods to eat to heal because I was tired of getting taking medication yes. or them upping the medication yes. or wanting to put me on more medication. Mm. And I'm thinking, I, I don't want to do this because I don't know what that medicine's going to do. It's going to create right. more issues. It will it kill me. Uh, and well let me just I mean yeah. it's that is like a big thing so I don't want to just jump over that mm -hmm. a lot of people think of food as you know I'm hungry nourishment whatever but food can either help us or it could hurt us absolutely and you know having followed a relative's journey mm -hmm. you know with diabetes mm -hmm. um, yeah. basically food killed him yeah so I that's a that's a big deal it is and it doesn't matter what age you are mm -hmm. you can always improve just by just by altering your diet just a little bit I mean because I always encourage people just do one thing at a time anyway. sure yeah and that's how that's I true did a lot it. yeah because I knew it wasn't practical for me because I had a lot of bad habits mm. and I was just realistic with myself thinking okay well I can do this I'll just do this let me just get used to this and then I would do another thing that's really great that you had that grace for yourself Yourself. Yes. A lot of people kind of beat themselves over things. Mm -hmm. it, and, and, and we do. It's like we, we, try, we go all in. We're going to do this. Mm -hmm. And what happens? We get overwhelmed and then we get discouraged because sure. it doesn't happen. Yeah, you're happen. measuring what you do. Instead of celebrating mm -hmm. your wins, you're measuring on that big picture thing you had mm -hmm. committed to. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I love that you said that. It mm -hmm. is celebrating the wins. Mm -hmm. But again, it was just being practical. Uh, at the time, I was in my late 40s. And I knew that what I had didn't happen overnight. I mean, it was years of building up. Sure. And talking about grace, gave grace, gave myself grace to take my time and do this. And mm -hmm. literally for me now, not everybody's different, but right. it took about three years for me to get to the point to where I started getting healthier and feeling better, having the energy and getting, okay. oh, and I lost all my muscle mass and building that yeah. muscle mass back up. I mean, I, it was just, it was a miserable time. Sure. Yeah, very yeah. lacking in, yeah. in energy and everything. So so give us some insight. What are some of the changes either that you made or that you suggest for other people yeah. to, to start? Oh, I love saying this. You know, <laughs> getting healthy is not rocket science, literally. It is so easy to do. Uh, but 
what is easy to do is also easy not to do. We get <laughs> in our true. habits. We don't want to do it. And that's a quote from a, one of my favorite books mm -hmm. uh, is The Slight Edge. Okay. Uh, really good book. And mm -hmm. It's easy read. And it's about doing simple things, but being consistent with it and continuing to do it. Okay. And so that applies to your health. doesn't matter what area of life. However, I was very in tune to how I felt and, and in tune to where I wanted to go. Okay. So here's five things that I tell people. It's like... I'm going to take notes. And I'm going to say, don't freak out. You know, because when I say them, they go, oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, so I just pick the easiest one. And okay. That's what I did. But there's five things that you want to steer away from or eat little of or, or have a little bit of this in your diet. Just don't do it all the time. Don't mm -hmm. be consistent in these things. Okay. And the five things are is um, gluten, which is most of our breads and pastas, uh, dairy from a cow, okay, which is your cheeses and your milk products and mm. ice creams and things. And then there is, um, um, I just totally drew a blank here. Oh, caffeine. Okay. And that's one of the, like, oh my gosh, I can't have my coffee. I'm, I'm saying, I'll tell them, you can have your coffee. Let's just. If there's maybe, time, I'll tell you my caffeine yeah, story. But Maybe cut back a little bit. <laughs> and, and I'll touch on that a little yeah. bit as well. And alcohol and uh, processed food. Okay. You know, most people go, oh, I understand about processed food. And for me, processed food was the easy. I, I didn't, I quit buying the box stuff, you know, like the canned things. Right. So that was my first one. I, did, I chose the easy food. Okay. And then once I got comfortable with not having that in, then I went to the second easiest for me, which was mm -hmm. the alcohol. Mm -hmm. And then the third easiest for me mm -hmm. was the caffeine. And, uh, but the two hardest was the gluten, because I love my bread, yeah. especially homemade bread. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, so I, 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 that was the, third, the hardest one for me though, right. was the cheese. It's like, uh. oh my gosh. I didn't realize how much cheese I was Right, eating. until you were trying to say yes. no. <laughs> well, they, they, was my, I, kept, I keep snacks in the car because sure. I'm on the road and I'm yeah. walking out in the field. And I kept Baby Bell, <laughs> string cheese, you know. Proteins, right? For energy. Yeah. Oh, oh well. Yeah, right. Um, oh, even for breakfast. Um, right. I did the processed food grits and okay. I put parmesan in my grits. Oh. Love that. It was yeah. so good. Uh, I mean, I was eating Are you going to make long. people crave what you don't want know, them to right? crave? You better stop. <laughs> so, but anyway, but what I did, and, and, and just, I just want to reiterate this yes. though about the cheese thing because mm -hmm. I didn't realize how much I was eating. All right. And because I was eating so much today, I thought, well, how am I going to do this? So right. I, cut, I started cutting back just a little just bit. Just a little at a time. I doing the snacks. Yeah. And then I got to the point where I said, well, I can do this every other day. Right, right. So whatever your hardest thing yes. to get off of, just, yes. just wean yourself off. Well, I think you're smart uh, in, because in business and in other things, they tell you you can't change what you don't measure, right? So if you're not aware mm -hmm. and you're not really conscious of how much, for example, cheese you're eating, um, you don't really realize yeah. until you start measuring. No, I don't mean measure it in a cup right. I mean being aware measuring right. you know how, how much, much a day I'm really doing this yeah or a week yeah. mm -hmm. and smart then, and so those those are the five areas and okay. for me because I was so inflamed once I was able to get off all that for yes. a long period of time uh, it was it was amazing how much better I started feeling and if I went fast forward a few years being consistent with all that um, I'm now in remission of things that I have. Wonderful. Um, now the Raynards, I have to say, I'm still, I don't have the pain in mm. the Raynards. I still have it, mm -hmm. but it's not painful where right. it used to be so painful. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm off all it, my medication. That's, that's great. Because you know, the medication affects our liver and other yes. things. Yeah, that's good. But I look at people in our, like my mother, I moved my mother in with me. She's 83. Mm -hmm. And before she moved in, she was, she was a sugar eater. I mean, major sugar eater, mm. processed sugar too. And it was, and, and so I kind of weaned her off that. Mm -hmm. And I could see a difference in her health as well. She's become less achy. Okay. Um, she, I'll give her, you know, I'll, I'll still buy her the things she likes, but I limit yes. that to her. But I keep fresh fruit, which she loves. Mm -hmm. and nuts, things like that yes. that, are, that are healthier for her. And her, her diet change has really right. I've seen the improvement in mm -hmm. her. And she's 83 mm -hmm. with early signs of dementia. Right. And so just for her not to say, oh, my, uh, yeah, she's always yeah. rubbing her legs. Right. My legs. She don't do that anymore. Wincing, and you could see the changes. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And it's just, and it's interesting because, it, again, it goes back to it doesn't matter what age you are, right. you can always improve. Well, I want to add one thing, which I've heard you say before, um, but it worked for me, and that's water. Um, I drink three tumblers a day of mm-hmm. water. Uh, two reasons. One, I started having arthritis very early. So it hurt every time I put my feet on the floor mm-hmm. and tried to move in the morning, I was achy. Yeah. And second, um, going through menopause, I had a hot, I went through menopause twice. Wow. Uh, once at a very young age and then later again. And, you know, those hot flashes where nothing seems to work, mm-hmm. water was like an elixir for me. Yes. So as long as I had enough, um, I'm drinking that much water, yeah. it really alleviates the aching, the pains. Mm-hmm. It was like, I, it was like I flipped a switch. Yeah. Have you found water to be important too, or? Absolutely. Yeah. The thing, the the five things I said just a few mm-hmm. minutes ago, those are the things to eliminate, or right? To keep at bay. But then there's things to do that you want to do. And, okay. And water is probably, for me, it's the top of the list because mm-hmm. you're you're mostly water. Yeah, we're made up of that, you right? Know, it's yeah. Between seventy and eighty wow. percent water. And That's so, if, and when I do demonstrations in, in, in public on this, I'll have like a flourishing plant. Okay. So imagine this beautiful plant. Right. What you got to do to grow that plant? Sure. Water it. Right. Water it, little sunshine, little mm-hmm. nutrients, right? And it grows beautifully. Yes. But if you don't water it, it mm. becomes a dried out stick. Yes. That's what we're doing to our body. Sure. So yeah. if you are avoiding water mm. you're, if you're not watering yourself you're dehydrating those organs your organs mm-hmm. start shutting down mm-hmm. your, you your muscles start shutting down right your bones uh it's it's like you said you know like dry and brittle yeah yeah it, it it oils it's like the oil it's oil in yeah our legs and yeah. our knees and yeah all our joints. joints yeah yeah mm-hmm. but you have to have that to replenish definitely so what what have you been able to do differently? I mean, physically without those symptoms, like what's the motivation for people to to try to start doing these things? What's possible? Do you think? I think people have to really step back outside of themselves mm-hmm. and realize that you are beautifully and wonderfully made. Mm, that's um, you have all the means. Your body knows what to do to make it, how do I word this? Your body knows what to do to um, keep it healthy yeah. if you put the good things in. Mm. Uh, and, and so when you're asking that question, it's, it's, it's actually a broad question. Right. If you narrow it down, if you just do the simple things that you know you're supposed to do, get plenty of sleep, uh, hydrate yourself, mm-hmm. um, stay away from toxic environment, which could be not only your food, but the people you're with. Sure. Um, it's also part of um, the environment, you know, things that you may absorb into your skin because so many things affect our health. Right. And it goes back to being smart about ourselves, that mm-hmm. we are valuable. When you start valuing yourself, uh, things change. Yeah. I like to say, like, um, Make invest in you because you're the only one you got. Yeah. You can't trade yourself in for a new one. Yeah. You spoke this morning and gave us some statistics, which were interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the average age right now, which is, is rising. So I don't want to depress anybody with what we're about to share, ish. but ish. Um, <laughs> but also, um, you know, when you put that into numbers, you know, how much time you have, it kind of puts a sense of urgency, right, into doing some of these things. So I'm a big believer in uh, in being, you know, forthright and saying the truth, laying it out there. So give us some, you know, numbers, like what is the average life and all of that. Well, the average, if you're speaking of everyone, now this is Mm -hmm. in the states, in the United States, the average lifespan for a person is around 80 80 years old. Mm. What's interesting, women tend to be more to 83-ish, men is even less. Okay, so the average is 80, okay. Yeah, and so they kind of average that in. Now, you're right, people are becoming wiser, there are healthier choices out there. Of course, we're we're in Tennessee, right? And Tennessee is uh, if it's if it's I haven't looked it up lately, but we were like number six in the unhealthiest states. Okay, but you know, even though we're living longer because a lot of it's medicine and artificial things that keep us living longer, 
what's the quality of that time, right? right. So let's say 80 is the healthy, mm -hmm. you know, your, your time to be, you know, able to do the maximum amount. Mm -hmm. So you also broke it down. What was the number you gave us for like how many Saturdays I think it was? Oh, and I want to say it was... Oh, it's like 4,000 like something. 4,100 Saturdays, if you were to break it down, 4,150 something. Right, like that. right. Saturdays. So if you look at how many Saturdays are in a lifetime, and as you grow up and you start working, that most number's people ticking live down. On Saturday to go, you know, you work all week. I came right. to Saturday. Right. And uh, I've always heard, don't wish your life away, but and you know, take value into each day. Mm -hmm. But it gives you that perspective. Yeah, I think like when you look at your life is made up of a little over 4,100 Saturdays. You know, how are you going to spend those Saturdays? Mm -hmm. We're just trying to give you some artificial motivation or maybe <laughs> intuitive motivation to, to step up and to maybe make some of these changes that Miranda's suggesting. I just want to go back to, though, it's like, you, I, I, you know, when I started looking into all this, I, I don't want to have someone change my diapers when I yeah. get old. Yeah. I, I want I want to be able to sustain myself. I want to be able to change my clothes, go yes. to the restroom, shower. I mean, I may get to the point where I can't drive, which I, I'm, you know, I'm wise enough. I'm okay with that. Right. However, I want to be able to live. I want to be able to live on my own if yes. I want to. Uh, I, I just know that seeing so many people that I know and love that have to be cared for and, and the burden that that can put on the family. I don't sure. want to be that burden. Not to mention, I want to live life to the fullest. Mm -hmm. And so when I, I, art's my passion. Yes. But health is my mission. Mm. And I cannot not share the value that I see in people right. that I want them to see in themselves. Because mm -hmm. most people, they value themselves, but I don't think they truly value to well, they are and how much they are worth. Yes, I think you make a good point. They value themselves, but do they invest in themselves? Right. You know, mm -hmm. and these are things that you can do that's mm -hmm. going to help boost you yes. and invest in a healthier life. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that part of your journey, because I happen to know you personally, um, also got you into uh, working with Juice Plus. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot about that regarding um, replacing, let's say, supplements with a different choice. Mm -hmm. So rather than me tell about it, sure. what is what is that all about and how does that help us? Well, there's a difference in vitamins and uh, plant powders. Uh, when I was researching foods to eat to heal, I learned so much. I'm thinking, oh, you know, um, cherries are so good for you. Pineapple's so good for you. Is it all these different foods? I'm thinking this is great. And when you look at what each one of these foods can do to your body, it, it excited me. Sure. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, just I, I so need this. But then realize, like, I'm not going to eat that every day. Yeah. I'm not going to go out and buy all that food. So I just of, figure you come in with a big knapsack full right. of food, trying to fit it in every day. Right. <laughs> and not to mention the waste it would be. Yes. I couldn't eat it all. And and I did understand that you want to be consistent in in having those healthy habits. So a friend of mine introduced me to it, and all it is is just fruits and vegetables in a capsule. Mm -hmm. um, the world headquarters is here. Right. Um, we are the title sponsor for the St. Jude Marathon, have been, uh, it's over 20 years now. And um, and then we're also affiliated with the um, uh, training center in North Carolina for Olympic oh, athletes and nice. professional athletes. But that, because it's all about the science. We have so much sure. science behind it. And so when I was reading about it, because I'm one of these, it's like, oh, you know, it's just another vitamin. But then when I understood that it was plant powders, I'm thinking this was the answer that I was looking for. Right. And and I have, there's a disclaimer on, on my health journey too. That was the only thing I did the first year because it was so easy to do. I thought, okay, I'll just sure, take this. Sure, sure. I was still taking my meds, but right. then I started feeling a little bit better about eight or nine months in, and I'm thinking, oh, and I had, didn't have any more migraines. I'm thinking, there's something to this. Right. That the, got me. Yeah, the only thing that you changed was yeah. that, and you were already yeah. seeing some yeah. improvement. And then one of the doctors that was working with me, he kept, he's the one that kept saying, <laughs> when you quit that cheese, things are right. going to change. And, uh, and so, and again, I gradually mm -hmm. did that, and then, again, I still... Right. I'm all about 
telling people that if you want to just hit the easy button for a simple yes. change, that's a simple way yes. to start. And it's an easy way to start. Right. And I and I what I found for my family because we we are you know we take it uh, we have it delivered is that um, it's easy to get people to do it. It's not it's not a big change. Yes. So at least I feel you know we're making progress. Right. So how much? Uh, fruits and vegetables are we supposed to eat a day? Well, we're supposed to have 9 to 13 servings, and this is a serving. Okay, of, uh, like a fruit. fistful mm -hmm. or a fist size? Mm -hmm. And if okay. you're an athlete or you work out, you need more. So think about it, 9. Like if we were to, mm -hmm. you know, let's put four four mm -hmm. fists up here, right? That's like That's a cup four. of spinach. Like a, if, you, if you're looking at spinach, yeah. a cup of spinach. Um, you know, a cup of carrots. Right, uh, right. You know, and I mean, you want, what people don't understand as well as in today's world, the food is depleted. Yes, there's been a lot about that recently in the news mm -hmm. that things are impacted while they're growing and how they're processed, right? right? The nutrients aren't, the, the soil is not as nutrient-dense as it used to be. Like when we were kids, it was, I want, to, I want to say it was four to seven or maybe five to seven servings of fruits and vegetables a day. Oh, wow. And as things change, sure. the environment's changed, and the, the farming has changed, the nutrients aren't like they used to be, right. so we need more. Wow. And that's that's the difference. Mm -hmm. And so when you try to think, oh, there's just no way that I can eat all that. Right. So farmer's markets are better. Yeah, because yeah, because that's direct have, farm to, mm -hmm. to table. Yeah. And there's less chemicals, mm -hmm. most of them. Well, so you've got to kind of check that. Sure. But then also frozen is really good because most of the frozen food, they pick it ripe. Yeah. When it's, it's, it's not picked early. Right. Like strawberries can be picked anywhere from a week to Well, it's always scary time. to me when I rinse strawberries off and I put them on a paper towel and the paper towel like turns like mm -hmm. the color of your shirt. The to me, that means there's they've injected something in there. I mean, it's they it's do. die. Yeah, I can't remember now what it, it's some kind of gas bomb that they mm -hmm. do. They throw them in the trucks once they're loaded mm -hmm. to turn them red. Okay. And so that yeah. doesn't sound. It's one good. thing to cut a strawberry and you lay them down and yeah. it creates the the juice right bombs. right. But you're no, right. I mean I'm talking but, just. Mm, you just you just don't know these mm. things. It's a it's a different world. The other thing is um, I found out that I'm allergic to propolis, which is like an additive. It's a natural additive. Mm. It's made by bees, but they're putting it on apples. Mm. They're using it to process other foods. And um, what was interesting to me is that I got on a plane and I thought I was being he healthy and I'm eating a whole apple, and the only. I'm choking, like I'm coughing, coughing, mm -hmm. coughing. And my husband said to me, I, I bet they, you know, to make that apple nice and shiny, they might have put propolis on the outside. Mm -hmm. So you just don't know, with, even with the fresh yeah. fruits and vegetables. Tell, tell them about your coffee story. Oh, so um, for 10 years, I had eczema on my face, and it would come and go. And I tried everything. I went to a dermatologist, doctor, salves, you know, tests to see if it was any you know, kind of bacteria, or whatever, could not figure out what it was. And my taste buds changed a bit. And I found I was putting too much creamer in my coffee. And I thought, I'm drinking creamer. I'm not really drinking coffee anymore. <laughs> I'm, you know, and you reach a certain age and anything you eat more easily puts weight on you. So I figured that's one thing I can cut out. I'll cut out coffee. Now, it wasn't easy with the, you know, loss of the caffeine, but... Um, it just took a couple days to get through that. Within a week, my eczema went away and has not come back. Has not come back. Mm -hmm. So I'm just putting that together with my allergy, you know, to the propolis that may be the processing of the beans. Because mm -hmm. um, I also choke on the small carrots when they process mm -hmm. those small carrots. Right. So you just don't know what's in your food. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not trying to scare you off of eating good food, but um, it's amazing how the environment mm -hmm. and what goes on and what they do to food nowadays can really impact you. That's and, my story. And, uh, and you, yeah. know, you know, I think the other thing is when we go into the grocery store, we, we assume mm -hmm. that, okay, they're selling it. In the grocery stores, so right. like going into a liquor store, we got to be carded to buy anything. <laughs> uh, but you go in there and you mm -hmm. think, okay, this it should, 
it shouldn't have crossbone right. danger sign on it. Right. Thing. But there shouldn't be a warning sign there included. Is. Yeah. I mean, there shouldn't yeah. be because there's so much interesting things that goes on that we don't see. Yes. And I'm always learning, and it always is like. Learning's good, but at the same time, it's like, oh, I don't want to learn it. I don't want to know this. You I'd know? rather, yeah, be yeah. blissfully ignorant, yeah. right? Yeah. But that's what gets us into trouble. And sure. And that's what it's all about. It's just mm -hmm. taking one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to get into the, the reading the labels. However, there's, it, yeah. I'm just going to encourage you to research label reading. Mm -hmm. um, the less but, ingredients, the better, right? The that was just a real quick mm -hmm. way. And now the mm -hmm. new thing is that they're doing is the bioengineered food, mm -hmm. which is on so many boxed yeah. foods now. You yeah. can flip it over and right. look, look below the ingredients, right. and it'll say bioengineered food. Yes. Which you don't know they're required to say that but you know who's looking for yeah. it so we only have about three minutes left mm -hmm. um, what I want to do because that could be a whole nother thing like how to read labels I think in the future we might do one on that mm -hmm. um, but what I wanted to do is let you all know that um, you can get a list of the five things and um, uh, that Miranda mentioned as well as a way to reach Miranda by going to my website which is uh, resource, the number four care.com. So www.resource4care.com. On there, you'll see um, Miranda's information. Um, you'll be able to click to get to the podcast. There's also YouTube recordings. And then I have a list of trusted professionals mm -hmm. that I've met in the 12 years I've been in home care and health care. Um, here in Memphis. So these are all local people that I know and I trust to either have on my podcast or work with on a regular basis. So we hope that you'll um, reach out and look at that site and educate yourself to have a healthier life and live healthy long past 80 years, mm -hmm. right? Right. I want to say one quick quote. Yes. I say that oh, it's my favorite quote. Every choice you make, think about these words, every choice you make is an investment in you. Amen. Thank you, Miranda. Thank you.